So question 19 from the reading, it asks us um, what are possible or expected charges on the commonly found indium ion. So indium is right here on the periodic table. And so this is a little bit ahead. Um, towards the end of lecture, we were going to get into ions and charges of those ions, but we can do that for indium. So the condensed configuration would be krypton, um, 5s2, 4d10, and then 4, sorry, 5p1 would be the condensed configuration of indium. And one of the things that I kind of mentioned when we were looking at valence electrons and trying to figure out valence electrons, I said, when we're filling the d orbitals, we tend to think of them as valence electrons. But once the d orbitals are full, we tend to think of them as more of like noble gas um, configuration electrons, that, that we're not gonna break a full complement of D electrons. So with that being said, if we just kind of ignore the four D electrons for right now with respect to indium, it's asking us what are possible charges that indium could have? Well, Indium has three valence electrons, if we think of these as core electrons because the d orbital is full. So possibly, potentially, we could lose one of these, we could lose all three of these. Um, so we could have charges of plus one, we could have charges of plus three, depending on how many of these that we are going to lose. Um, so we can lose, the P electron, we can lose an S electron, um, or we could lose all of those electrons. Um, so we could expect to find indium at plus one. If plus one would come from this, we're gonna lose the, the P electron first. So indium plus one would be krypton 5S2, 4D10 and we lose that highest energy electron. That would be indium plus one. The other two valence electrons we could have, we could expect to lose those two. That would be the only other electrons we could lose would be these electrons right here. So the other charge I could expect to see for indium would be indium three plus, and that configuration would just simply be krypton four D10. I would be three plus because I lost, overall I lost one, two, three, negatively charged electrons. So um, we were just getting to this in class on Thursday, but we'll do a little bit more of this at the class on start of class on Tuesday of figuring out going from electron configurations of atoms to electron configurations of ions. Yeah. Uh, I think it kind of makes sense because you kind of get rid of the, the ones, you make it one plus. We only have valence electrons that we can get rid of. So we have those three valence electrons. So it's a matter of yeah, getting rid of those, those valence electrons. Um, and you want to take a look at question 20 yeah. as well? Like, yeah, so which metal ion does not have pseudo noble gas configuration? So that was question 19. Um, for question 20, we're given the following ions. I've got silver plus one, got gallium three plus, I've got copper plus one, nickel two plus and lead uh, plus four. And it asks me which one of these, which metal ion does not have pseudo noble gas configuration. And for that, we kind of want to look at where each of these are in the periodic table and the, the configuration of each of these. So it is kind of a tricky question um, because some of these configurations don't follow what we know. So for example, um, silver is, silver zero would be krypton uh, 5s1, 4d10. Even though silver is right here, silver is one of those exceptions where silver skips filling the s orbital. So it only puts one electron in the s orbital and then it actually fills the d orbitals. So silver, we would expect it to be 5s2 
4d9, it's 5s1, 4d10. So because of that, silver plus one, we're going to lose this one electron right there. And yeah, we said if we have a full d orbitals with electrons, we kind of consider that our noble gas configuration. So that would have, this would be pseudo noble gas configuration. Um, you can see that for the same thing for gallium, right? Gallium is right here. So the gallium would be argon, 4s2, 3d10, um, 4p1. So gallium three plus is gonna lose this electron, lose these two electrons. And yes, this would also be pseudo noble gas. Copper plus one is the same trick as silver. So copper is argon, 4s1, 3d10. So copper plus one, we lose that one electron. Because again, copper, silver, chromium, they don't follow the normal rule. Copper plus one, we'd lose that. And what we'd have left would give us a pseudo noble gas configuration. Aha, we've got, we've got one now. Nickel, nickel would be argon, 4s2, 3d8. So nickel two plus, to form nickel two plus, we're going to lose these two S electrons. What we'd have left is not a full D shell of electrons. So as a result, we would still consider this valence electrons and we wouldn't, we wouldn't think this has pseudo noble gas configuration. We'll check lead to make sure, but I'm pretty sure lead's gonna be pseudo noble gas as well. And yeah, for lead, <laughs> for lead we get, um, let's see huge xenon um, 6s2 and then we would have 4f14 5d10 and then 6p2 the key being right here and right here so lead four plus we're going to lose these two electrons and we're going to lose these two electrons everything we have left is the full D and full F block. So this would also be pseudo noble gas. So it should be, um, it should be nickel two plus is the only one that has a pseudo noble gas configuration. And yeah, that was quite the involved um, question just to get that. <laughs>